trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Ah! 
God, and all will see how great, how great is our Good morning and greetings, Vandria Park family. Welcome to worship this morning as we celebrate Laity Sunday. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to say welcome. We are so glad to have you. We also want you to visit our website at vandriaparkumc.org and complete the I'm New Here survey page <laughs> form with your contact information. Someone from our team will reach out to you. If you are a returning worshiper, welcome home. It's always great to have you in person or in our virtual space. We want you to go into the comment section and greet another member of the Van Vier Park family or leave a message and let us know that you're watching this morning. If you haven't already done so, we want you to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Van Vier Park UMC. That way you'll always remain connected and in the loop with all of the wonderful things happening here at Vandria Park United Methodist Church. We encourage you to share the stream, tag a friend, text or call someone, and let them know that you are in worship this morning and they would like for them to join you. We have a great service plan for you and we cannot wait to share it. We hope you enjoy the service. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Grace. Would you please stand and join me for the call to worship or stand as you are able? We are all called to experience grace and share the life, the gift of life in Jesus. We remember the faith that lived in those who loved us. In every scene of trauma, tragedy, and menace, we discover love already at work. And we join a chorus where brokenness and captivity become healing and freedom. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
Praise the Lord this morning. So I come to you this morning with the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together this morning in prayer to thank you for all that you have given us, even when we don't deserve it. We are grateful for your continued grace and mercy that you have on our life. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you protect every member and visitor that walks through the doors of Vanderveer Park United Methodist Church. We pray for any man, woman, or child that passes by this church. May the words we sing stretch far enough that even the angels protecting the gates of heaven are moved by the joyful spirits they witness and the worship that we will show you this morning. Guide our pastor's tongue, mind, and heart to deliver the message of your word. May your words resonate through our ears long enough that it continues to resonate, not only on this day, but each day that you bless us with this week. Lord Jesus Christ, may you provide comfort to anyone who may be yearning the loss of a friend or loved one. Bring a financial blessing to someone struggling with their finances. And may you walk and speak to a lost soul wandering astray like a sheep in the wilderness or possessed by any demonic forces that come in the forms of, just to name a few, alcohol, drugs, and even domestic violence. In the name of Jesus, we pray for any generational curse that tries to make its way to plague on our offsprings. Guide our political leaders and government to make humane decisions that bring healing to our planet. Finally, may we fall on our knees when tempted by sin because it is through supplication that we, as a church, recognize that we are forgiven. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.
Amen. I think we could do a little bit better than that for kids in Christ. You know, as I told the 8 o'clock service this morning, that it has been far too long that we have seen our children. And they are back. They are ministering to us. And we are so glad to have them. And, you know, they just do a great job. And they could be anywhere on Sunday morning, but they are here in their church with their church family ministering to us. So kids in Christ, I am grateful for you. And I want to just remind you that um, today as I, I, as I start that, you know, as Grace said this morning, today is Laity Sunday. And I am Deaconess Gail Douglas Boykin. I also serve as the lay leader here at Vanderveer Park United Methodist Church. And I just want to let you know, uh, remind some of you, inform a few of what Laity Sunday is. Now, Laity Sunday is a day that is set aside to remember that every person is invited to embody God's restoration project of healing love, justice, and world repair. It is a special Sunday which has been defined by the General Conference to celebrate the ministry of all Christians, not just the pastor, not just Mr. Trapp, not just those in charge, but all Christians. And this day is usually celebrated on the third Sunday in October, which today is, and Laity Sunday is one way that we express the deep conviction that all are called to participate in God's ministry and live this calling through the ministry of the church. So on this Laity Sunday, as we emphasize reviving the gift that first lived in those who loved us into leadership, that might have been your mom, your grandma, your dad, your grandpa, maybe your auntie, your uncle, and some grandparents or godparents or a sister or a brother, but whoever they were, we pause to remember their names. And I want you to ask yourself, who loved you into leadership? Can you see their face? Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher or a coach, a pastor, a family member, or even someone's name you may have forgotten. And maybe this year, at the beginning of the beginning of the ending of the pandemic, a memory of those who saw a spiritual future for you is key to sharing grace with others who have forgotten or are just beginning to awaken God's calling. So I encourage you, just as someone poured into you back then, that you pour into someone else. Because you know we have that... Um, hand sanitizer station at the front of the church when you come in. Did anybody read the sign on that hand sanitizer station? That, sta that station says, spread the gospel, not the germs. So you never know what seeds you're planting into someone. So I encourage you all to do that. And then, you know, speak life into someone so the same way that someone spoke life into you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now for this week's announcements. I would ask that you would please remember to include those who are on our sick and shut-in list in your prayers. And those persons are Charles Atiles, Thea Manda Boyce, Vivine Brewster, Tan Cambridge, Wilbert Christie, Ina Cross, Kathleen Dash, Lynette Douglas, Lenore Flaveny, Arnold Fuller, Marlene Griffith, Daphne Haynes, Leonie Hope, Teresa Joseph, Polly Juner, Norma Lee, Beryl London, Keith Mahoney, Alva Morgan, Phyllis Pinnock, Phyllis Rance, Joseph Roberts, Sharice Roberts, Shirley Seeley, Hilda Seeley, Claudette Silvera, Ruby Watson, Shirley White, Yvonne Williams, Ina Wilson, and Yvonne Young. And in addition, if you or anyone you know is sick or shut in, please let us know by calling the church office so that we can include them in our prayers. And you know, prayer changes things, amen? Amen. And um, while we're mentioning the sick and shut in, I just want to let you know that on last Sunday, we celebrated the 100th birthday of Mr. Alva Morgan. And when I tell you it was a joy to be in his presence, this man, I should, oh my God, he 
has all his faculties. He read every birthday card that he received and read it over and over again. Um, we just had a great time celebrating his birthday and he wanted to thank everyone because he watched the service and he heard y'all sing a happy birthday to him and he heard the special birthday prayers and he just wanted to extend his thanks to his church family for not forgetting him and for continue to lifting him up in prayer. So I say that we continue to do that, not just for Mr. Morgan, but for all of those on our sick and shut in and that praise God we'll be celebrating his 101st birthday next year. Amen. Amen. Um, our Monday morning men's man of prayer line continues and that happens at 7 a.m. on Monday mornings. The call in number is 605 Four seven five four eight hundred, and the access code is one zero three two five nine zero. On Wednesday morning, we have our prayer line in which everyone is welcome to join. That takes place at six thirty a.m. The call-in number for that call that prayer line is six eight one nine 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 zero two three nine, and the access code. It's 389-759. Again, um, these numbers are all, all of the announcements um, are in the Vanderbilt Park e-news that's mailed to you. Just to let you know that on Wednesday night, pastor's Bible study is canceled on this Wednesday because that is the night that we will be starting our revival. Pastor's Bible study will resume next Wednesday on the 27th at 7.30 p.m. And you are welcome to join that via Zoom or you may call in. You can also view it on Facebook because it is streamed live to Facebook. So that call in number is 646-558-8656. And the passcode for that is 67, um, excuse me, 697 653 now, next Sunday, as we continue our anniversary celebration, next Sunday is Hymn Sing Sunday. So if you have not already submitted the hymns that you would like for Mr. Trapp and the music ministry to consider in the worship service, I would implore you that you would get them sent. You would send them to vpumcmedia at gmail.com. Today is the deadline for doing that, but Mr. Trapp is gracious and has said that if you can't get it done today or you don't have email, that if you would please call the church office, you can even call the church office today. Leave a message so that Allison will get it and she can record it and um, send that to Mr. Trapp. The church phone number is 718-434-3741. And if you can't get it done today, Mr. Trapp, gracious that he is, is extending a little more grace to you to get it done by tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So let's all be mindful of that deadline. Coming up on November 7th, we will be celebrating All Saints Day. And that is the day that we prepare to, that we honor those who have passed, those saints among us that have passed this past year. So we are asking or requesting that you, if you want to honor someone that has passed this year, that you would submit their picture to us at vpumcmedia at gmail.com no later than Friday, October 29th. When you submit that photo, please include their full name, their date of birth, and the date of their death. Now, here at Vanderveer Park, for those of you that are out there in our East Space, you can't see it, but we have all of the ministries hanging up, flags and banners representing all of the ministries here at Vanderveer Park hanging up around the sanctuary. And I would say to you that God, that laborers are needed in this vineyard. And is God calling you to serve? If so, I would ask that you would call the church office and let them know which ministry you're interested in or if you need additional min information about a ministry that you would call and ask so that you can um, give your name and, and just be a willing participant and a willing servant of God. Now again, this is October. We're still celebrating our 121st year of ministry in this community. I say that deserves a hand clap of praise, amen? So you know, God has kept us and we've been here for 121 years and we're just asking that, you know, for our anniversary offering that you would give or remember that you would give that you are $121 for your 
anniversary offering, and that would be $1 for every year that we've been in service. And our counters and the finance department, they are requesting that when you put your offering in an envelope, that you would please legibly write your name and your um, envelope number on that, and that is to make sure that your offerings are accurately accounted for. Amen? Amen. So as I said, our fall revival starts this Wednesday. And when I tell you, we have, we have some awesome and amazing pastors lined up for you this week. On Wednesday night, we will have the Reverend Tiate Carson, and he hails from the Greater Allen AME Cathedral, and he will be bringing us the word on Wednesday night. On Thursday, we have the Reverend Dr. Samuel Arheen from the Ghana UMC Church in the Bronx, and he's going to be here on Thursday. On Friday, we have the Reverend Monica DaCosta from the Grace UMC Church in St. Albans. Now, we have asked people to register to attend because we still, you know, COVID is still among us and we want to be faithful and make sure that everyone is safe. And um, people haven't been so quick to do that, okay? So um, what we're asking is that if you intend to uh, attend revival, and we hope and pray that you would, we don't want to bring our guest pastors here and have them preach it to an empty sanctuary, do we? No. Now I know that some of us have gotten used to being out there in that virtual space, our virtual sanctuary, and sitting back and relaxing and kicking off your heels and, and just being, you know, chilling in the Word at home. But this week for Revival, we need you to chill here, okay? We need to see your face in this space on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And if God would so move your heart, come back on Sunday for some more. Amen? Amen. Now, I know that there are some people and I might be a part of this, that have not worn heels since COVID, okay? But guess what? I put some on this morning, they still fit, they comfortable, thank you, Jesus! They are comfortable. So you know what I'm saying? Get dressed and come on out and be a part of, of worship here in the sanctuary. We would love to see your face in this space. Amen? Amen. So, um, remember, our blood drive is taking place on Friday, October 22nd, and it is sponsored by uh, Reverend Kevin, I keep calling this man Reverend, uh, Senator Kevin Parker, and um, he gonna get me for that, but I'll be all right. Jesus gonna protect me and him too, right? So um, our blood drive is taking place on Friday, October 22nd, um, from noon p.m. to 6 p.m., and uh, they need your uh, pledge drive, your blood drive pledge. So if you, um, the information has been emailed to you in the e-news, and if you know you might not be technologically savvy, call the church office, speak with Allison, and um, let Allison help you through that process. Because, you know, the thing is, there is a blood shortage, and giving blood saves lives. Now, we are preparing for our charge conference, and you know that happens every year. So all ministry leaders and committee chairs, you are asked to submit your committee reports to the church office, and the deadline for doing so is Sunday, October 31st. You have two weeks to get your report in. All righty? So, um, as I said before, all announcements have been emailed. If you are not receiving them or have not received them, please call the church office at 718-434-3741 to update your contact information so that you can be kept in the loop and be informed of all of the wonderful things that are happening here at Vanderveer Park United Methodist Church. Amen? Amen. So let us continue with our health moment. Um, and before, as you leave the sanctuary today, let me just remind you that um, there's going to be an event. There's going to be a baptism here in the sanctuary um, this afternoon. So uh, at the end of service, we ask that you please use the side doors to expeditiously exit on your way out so that the altar guild can clean the sanctuary and prepare it for the baptism service this afternoon as we welcome two new members into the body of Christ. Amen. All right now. All righty. And our health moment. You know, um, we've been talking to people about being vaccinated and, and we know that the, as vaccine numbers go up, that the rate of people being affected or infected with COVID go down. And you know, 
I, I've been vaccinated now since the beginning of the year, I think it was April, um, that, I, that I got my second shot. And I understand that there are some people that have uh, underlying health conditions that do not allow them to get the vaccine. I get that, I understand it. But for those of you that are still thinking about it, um, I don't know if I should do this and all of these things. You know, a while back we heard, you know, all of these different rumors and we heard our very own Tanya Rodriguez say, you know, Tanya's growing every day. And Tanya said to us, you know, I got the vaccine and her and the baby are healthy and you know, so she encouraged, she, she spoke a testimony up here about getting the vaccine. And you know, and there are other people that are elderly. My own mom is 87 years old. My mom said as soon as she was able to get it, she was getting it. My twin brother, who wasn't that um, enthusiastic about getting it until one day, you know, you have a special bond with twins. And, and me and my brother, we often fight. Okay, we, we always fought when we were younger. But I told my brother, as much as me and my brother fight, it's all fighting in love. But I told him, I said, you know, Dale, I really, you, it, very, it hurts my heart that you are so hesitant to get this vaccine and you believe all of this fake news that's going around. I said, but you know what? Just think about the fact that when I was in labor, with my daughter, my brother felt every labor pain. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. He took every labor pain for me. And I didn't feel a one, and that's the gospel truth. But then I, th I told him, I said, Dale, imagine what would happen in reverse if you got COVID and, and you know God took you away from me. What that, I mean, I love you, you're my brother. I don't want anything to happen to you. And you know, imagine our mother is still alive and imagine what that would do to her. So you know, he ain't think nothing about what I said, but when I brought my mother into the situation, oh, Dale went and got a COVID shot, okay? He got two, all right? So um, I just say, you know, and as we walk by people on the street, you know, we don't know what's going on, but we can do our part. And it's not just about keeping us. It's not a me thing. It's about the community and keeping everybody safe. So I would just ask that you would do your part. And if you are already vaccinated, which those of you here in the sanctuary are, and those that may be in our virtual space that are not, if you would just speak a word to somebody, and some of you out there are vaccinated, but just consider it. If you need to get more facts, Speak to your health care provider, someone that you trust to get the vaccine. Amen? Amen. And there ends my sermon on the health moment this morning. So we are once again going to hear from our children, our kids in Christ, and please welcome them. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. I could listen to them sing all day. I don't know about you, but I could listen to them sing all day. It is now time in our service where we worship through giving. So if you would please join me for our giving declaration. I am a benevolent believer. Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. I sow into this church because I believe in the vision and ministry of this church. Because I am a tither, I am not a beggar or a borrower, but a lender. I expect the windows of heaven to pour out blessings too big for me to contain, and God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Therefore, I will share my blessings with my family, my neighbors, and the world. Amen. And here at Vanderveer Park, we have several ways that you can give. You can text to give. You can your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. You can text by text to give by texting V P U M C G I V E to eight three three seven one six three four zero four. You can go to our website, which is Vanderveer Park U M C dot O R G and give there, or you can download our church app, which is uh, available in the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store. And of course, we still accept offerings um, in the mail at Vanderveer Park, UMC 3114 Glenwood Road, Brooklyn, New York 11210. And as I said before, the counters, um, they would ask that you would please be mindful and write legibly on your envelopes. And of course, if you're here in the sanctuary and you have not already done so, you can give in person to the basket uh, right down front. Amen. And please uh, follow the instruction of the ushers.
Let us pray. God of great blessing, but even greater lessons, remind us again who gives life and who receives it. Sometimes, like Job, we need to have our questioning answered with a lesson. We need to learn that we are not the ones in charge in the universe. The gifts we bring this morning are not a down payment towards future favor, but a token of a debt we will never be able to repay. May we gain wisdom in the giving, and may these gifts be blessed for your glory, not ours. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, our scripture reading this morning is going to be done by one of our young people, Mr. Jamal Thompson. So um, come on, Jamal. Good morning, church. This scripture reading will be taken from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. The scripture reads, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink and will be baptism with which I am baptized with. You will be baptized. But to sit in my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those who they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them, but it is not among so you. But whoever wishes to become great among you, you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be your first servant, you must be slave of all. For the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. As our children uh, prepare to come before us again, I just want to let you know, as I said earlier today, that today is Laity Sunday. You may be seated. You may be seated. Um, the children can come. Um, I said that it is Laity Sunday, and on Laity Sunday, we give the pastors a break. And that's because um, lay people will bring the word on La Laity Sunday. And this morning, I just want to let you know that we are so blessed to have Sister Vera James Thomas um, bringing the word to us this morning. We are grateful for her. And, um, you know, we we're grateful that she said yes and she was obedient to God's word um, as she uh, said yes to come and bring the word this morning. So we're going to uh, do our church declaration, and you were right. Uh, you can sit and do the church declaration this morning because I don't want y'all jumping up and down. But we're going to do the church declaration. You will hear from the children, and then the next voice you hear after them will be that of Sister Vera James Thomas. So please join me for our church declaration. We declare this church to be a church that welcomes the Holy Spirit enthusiastically, embraces holiness totally, believes the Bible conclusively, worships the Lord exclusively, and loves one another exhaustively. Amen.
existing in our stand for our next hymn.
word to God. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I just want to read from the gospel according to Luke, according to Mark, chapter 10, 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us that we may sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the, bapti with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit at my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slaves of all, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God. You know, friends in Christ, it is a privilege to stand here this morning and bring God's message to you. Let us now go to God in prayer. Father God, you are great and greatly to be praised. And as the psalmist said, you are clothed with honor and majesty. Lord, I thank you for using me in this ministry as I give myself away to you. As I say, I am available, Lord. I thank you, O God, for your guidance and your grace. I thank you, O God, for the purpose for which you have called me this morning. May your Holy Spirit anoint me. I pray, O gracious God, that you will fill me with your power, that I can bring forth your word boldly and with authority, and that your people will hear and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the tenth chapter of Mark's gospel provides us with insight into the conversation which James and his brother John had with Jesus. The chapter informs us Jesus was steadfastly continuing his journey to Jerusalem. And as they went along, he continued to teach his disciples about kingdom values and discipleship. He has just informed his disciples for the third time about his impending death in Jerusalem. That information, my friends, just went into one ear and out the other. And when the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus, he used this opportunity of the disciples' failure to grasp upcoming events as a teachable time to explain what discipleship should be like. 
they were reminded that there is a great difference between his followers and the world. The key insight shared concerning what it means to follow Jesus has compelled me to affix the title of this sermon for today, Embarking on Fervent Discipleship. So to be a fervent disciple for God means keeping our hearts deeply focused, faith-filled, and passionate towards him. It means to align ourselves with Jesus. It requires us to be enthusiastic. It means we must avoid being lukewarm or borderline Christians. Fervor is necessary to advance God's kingdom, and it is propelled by disciples who share and live the gospel with qualities of submission, self-sacrifice or suffering, and servanthood. Journey with me now as I plunge a little deeper into the text, using three significant points to illustrate the qualities of fervent discipleship. Firstly, fervent discipleship requires submission. What is our first point? Submission. Those two disciples, James and John, they came to Jesus, and in verse 35 of the text, is detailed their quest. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Whatever we ask. It sounds like a, a, a child going to school and asking the teacher, teacher, we want you to do, can you do whatever I ask? Implicit in their approach and request was the notion that whatever request they were asking, or whatever request they were making to Jesus was beyond rejection. They wanted Jesus to do whatever they requested even before they asked it. They wanted the assurance that when Jesus' kingdom was established, they would have held the two highest positions of authority and power. That assurance, my friends, is borne out in verse 36 of the text. Grant us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. It is not inconceivable to think that these two men were out of order. And as I say it, what audacity. How could you ask to grant us one to sit at your right and one to sit at your left? Is it any surprise to us to hear the request? And those of us who would have read about these disciples and know more about them, know that they were the sons of thunder, and thunder was a rich man. I wonder if wealth was getting to their heads. Those two disciples formed part of Jesus' inner circle. And consequently, they felt that they deserved the two highest positions. We must take this argument to its logical conclusion. What about the other disciples? How do you think they felt about James and John? According to the text, they became angry because they too had the same thoughts. And the question is also relevant to us today. What about us, my friends? Do we not sometimes feel that our hard work in this vineyard have earned us a special place in God's mm -hmm. kingdom? We're working hard, and we do not see that the work that we are doing is not to ourselves. Admittedly, sometimes we find ourselves praying and asking God for some selfish things. We pray, Heavenly Father, or God the Creator, or Almighty God, whatever we want to call him. And we say, I want, I want God, I want this and I want that, and I want the other. Give me, Lord, give me, give me, just let me have it. We pray for wants and not need some of the times. Our pastor reminded us that we need to watch our mouth and see our hearts. And I say perhaps John and James did not do that. They did not watch their mouths and see their hearts. But thank God for you, Reverend Bourne or Boone, so that we too 
know now that we must watch our mouths and see our hearts. This morning, let us remind ourselves that submission is not about where we sit. It is not about where we sit. Submission is not about our title that we hold, whether it be in the church or in the workplace. Submission has nothing to do with our wealth and our positions. Submission has nothing to do with what we, we think people call us, whether they add a title on the, to our names or not. Submission is not about our finest garments, how we dress for others to see us. It is not about our personal gains. Submission is not about show business, my friends. It's not about status. Submission is not about us. Submission is about God. Submission is about God, not about us. It is about loving God and being transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. We ought to be passionate about becoming Christ-like if we are not friends of Christ. What about fervency? What about fervency? To be a fervent disciple mandates that humankind submits to the call and commission of God. Instead of craving earthly possessions, we love our nice cars, not so. We cherish our nice cars, not so. We cherish our homes, our earthly possessions, and how much money we have in the bank, not so. We do. Those are not the very important things. It is not about the glory of selfish ambition. Submission is about denying self and following Jesus. Submission is about denying self and following Jesus. We must be willing to accept the role that God has given us to perform and be faithful to carry out his assignments. That is what it is about. Jesus has promised to prepare a place for us. We must not perceive it as just a physical place. We must also perceive ourselves as occupying positions important positions in the kingdom of God. That, that kingdom is void of personal preferences. We cannot take what we prefer or see as good things when we arrive at God's kingdom. God's sovereignty chooses that place for us. We just have to be in total obedience and endure all things in our walk with Christ. Amen? The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live is in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What is Paul saying? It's not me. It's not about me. It's not me. It's about Christ. All for Christ. And when we read the gospel story, there are two people who were placed on the left and the right hand of Jesus as he was glorified. Who were they? Two thieves. Two thieves who were crucified with him on the cross. I said to us this morning, if we want to sit on the right, and on the left hand with Jesus, then we too must be prepared to endure crucifixion. It requires us to be dead to self. Be dead to self. Amen? Amen. We come to church and we worship. We have not been here for many Sundays, but we would usually come every Sunday and worship. And some may say, I pay my tithes. I give offering. Anytime they ask for a donation, I give donation. I give gifts. I work in various ministries. 
whether I'm asked to yes or no. But what do I really get in return? As fervent disciples, we are called to submit ourselves totally to the will of God. Our task is to submit without seeking reward. I want to say this again. Our task is to submit without seeking reward. So firstly, we understand that fervent discipleship entails submission. And secondly, it entails self-sacrifice or suffering. There is a beautiful prayer used in the Methodist Church at the start of each year in which Christians renew the covenant a relationship with God. And the prayer goes like this. You can say it with me if you know it. I am no longer my own but thine. Put me with what you will. Rank me with who you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. On the first Sunday of every year, we Christians or disciples renew our covenant with God and we recite this prayer. What happens throughout the rest of the year? We forget our pledge and we do just whatever we think we can. Ever we want to, forgetting what our affirmation was. In reply to James and John's request, Jesus doesn't reprimand them for their ambition. He simply asks them to consider the cost. Consider the cost of what you're asking. You do not know what you are asking. And then he draws on two metaphors that James and John would understand. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? I ask us this morning, friends in Christ, can we? Can we? As Jesus was asking, can you really drink all this suffering? Can you drink all this suffering and be submerged in it? How much are we prepared to suffer for Christ? How much are we? As soon as you get a little bounce on the toe or the finger, we cry out. much more to suffer for Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus was about to bear the wrath for our sins on the cross. He therefore was saying to James and John, I am about to go through a time of extreme suffering and pain. I will suffer and I will die for the sins of the world. Die for you and for me. We see this reference to in Isaiah 53. But he was pierced for transgressions. He was crushed for iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. They replied to Jesus, the disciples, are you able? They said, yes, we are able. But Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. But to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant. You see, my dear people of God, we go to God with this kind of gimme, gimme attitude. Give me this and give me that. 
Give me, Lord, give me. We're always wanting. But he doesn't give us what we want. God gives us what we need. And when we pray for our wants, and we don't get it, sometimes we think that God is not answering our prayers. But God gives us what we need. In answer to their prayers, they want to sit at the right and at the left. But instead of giving them seats, they got Jesus Christ who died for us. God gave them his life. What more could they have asked for? What more can we ask for? We have Jesus. Our sins. He took our sins and went to the cross. Jesus explained that they would have suffered because that was the price of greatness. That is the cost of living a life that matters. That is the only way to have power and influence in God's kingdom. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is saying the same thing to us this morning. He's saying it to us as we covenant to live a life that really matters. If we want to embark on fervent discipleship, then there is a cost. James and John wanted a crown. They wanted to be overseers and not peasants. They wanted a, short, a shortcut to glory. They did not want to face persecution, the cross, and even to die. But my friends, the people with the sweet, sweet spirit at Vandiver United Park, there must be a cross before a crown. The cross comes before the crown. We too must suffer and endure as he asks his original disciples to. But you see, God can use that suffering to make us better people if we go to him with our pains. We must submit to his will. We must count the cost. We must take up our cross and follow him. He can do the ongoing work of change in our hearts and lives to make us fit for his kingdom. We can conquer it all joy when we have our trials because we know the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. Amen? Amen. It does. Now, Jesus did not promise anything but suffering for those two disciples. And such element of suffering is equally applicable to us at this time. One may ask, those two disciples did not quite understand what it meant to be servants of God. They did not understand that God's kingdom was not about what they wanted or what they preferred. Jesus negated their request indicating that it had nothing to do with earthly rulership. Nothing with earthly rulership. And verse 43, 44, and 45 provided us with his responses. The crux of the matter is, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Additionally, whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. And he further assured them that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. My dear brothers and sisters, this leads us to our next significant point, which is Our next significant point, which is servanthood. I caught you there. Servanthood. We must take note of the fact that Jesus shifted the focus from the disciples and rightfully placed it on meeting the needs of others. It was not for them to become super saints. They were called to be of service to others. 
and so are we. He reminded them of their true calling. They were called to be vessels that God would fill with his spirit so that he could pour out his spirit on others in need. The world today desperately needs such called and committed servants. The world today needs servants like that. Jesus himself showed us what servanthood is like. He was a typical example of a committed servant. And if we read Hebrews 5, 1 to 10, which is one of our readings for today, we will really see all it spelled out right there. Now the foundation and basis of servanthood is giving. Yes, Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all who believe in him. Do we believe? Do we believe? And if we do, yes, he gave a life, his life a ransom for you too. Jesus, with all of his power and might, did not come to serve with a high-minded disposition. His love and grace compelled him to come down to serve us. His service, my friends, provides us with the formula for attaining eternal life. He paid the price for all of us. Instead of having others bow down and worship him, he bowed and he washed his disciples' feet. He served them with a meal. He showered love and praise for them. This, my friends, was the highest form of humility. Highest form of humility. Humble service means a lot. It tells us that we must be humble people too. Not so? Yes, we must be humble. We are encouraged to put on humility. Be clothed with humility and walk in humility. What can we take away from this text? Assuredly, we all must lay down our lives in the service of others. It must not always be about our own agenda. Jesus wants us to minister to the needy. He is always available to assist us when we are exhausted. Banduri Balo penned the words of this hymn. We are made for service, to care for each other. We are made to love each sister and brother with love that will last through sorrow and pain, a love that will never die with strain. Life can be so lonely when nobody cares. Life can be so empty when nobody shares. But if we give ourselves both time and again, the love of Jesus will live within. What then, my friends? God is calling you to be a fervent disciple today. He is calling today. The same Jesus who commissioned his disciples, including James and John for service, is commissioning you and I in a similar manner. There is much work to be done in the mission field. The time has come for us to launch out deeper. Some may say we have already launched, but we need to go deeper. We need to go further out. You have been reaching out and meeting the needs of some, such as the hungry and the homeless. The naked needs to be clothed. The sick must be provided with care, and the sinner must be ushered to salvation. Jesus is calling us today. I urge us to keep on submitting ourselves, to keep on sacrificing, and to keep on serving. Jesus is returning soon to reward his pilgrims for their dedicated service. And he desires us that we put our hand to the plow 
without turning back. Put our hands to the plow without turning back. So that on that bright and precious morning, he will usher us in. Well done, good and faithful servant. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Trapp, can I just ask if you play another verse of that hymn for me, please? Where he leads me. Thank you. God is inviting you, even now, to be his disciple. Will you go with him all the way? Have you heard him calling in the night? Have you heard him calling today? Are you ready to submit? Are you? Can we silently pray? Asking God, our Father, what do you want me to do for you? Let us open our mouths and pray. Talk to God. What do you want me to do for you, God? Avail yourself for ministry. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Even now, Lord God is answering prayers. God is answering prayers right now. Right now. We have been promising over and over again to launch our nets out in the deep. We have been promising to serve God in the way that he wants us to, to be a disciple. Whatever has been holding us back. This morning, God is breaking down barriers. He's breaking down barriers. He's removing the stumbling blocks as we offer ourselves to him to be fervent disciples. We want to be disciples as Jesus has called us to denying self. For those of you in your virtual space and those of us in the sanctuary, as God has called to serve in different ministries or even to accept him as the personal Lord and Savior, at this time, his blessing 
He's blessing us. He's blessing us. At this time, he's saying, walk with me, I'll walk with you. I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I will be your guide, I will be your protector. He's holding hands even now. And we say, thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Jesus, for your promise. Thank you, Jesus. I'll go with you all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will follow. I will go with him all the way. Amen and amen. us out. May we walk like him and talk like him. Be disciples for him wherever we go. Let us remember that the world is watching us. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. And God's church say, Amen. 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 Amen.